Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the live Ecom Guy. I want to provide you all with some updates. So I did watch the House Financial Services um, hearing today that Jerome Powell attended. So this is March 8th, 2023. Today is Wednesday. So guys, definitely more exciting than the Senate hearing. Reason being is that there was actually quite a bit of talk about the balance sheet and um, I'll bring that up a little bit later. So a lot of talk about uh, the uh, debt limit. So that's fast approaching and people, I guess uh, these house members are generally worried. Uh, things like digital assets, CBDC, um, uh, the upcoming budget plans. So all these things were mentioned. Lots of talk about climate change and how the Fed should be involved, how they should uh, include that in their projections. Um, someone asked uh, Powell about budging on that 2% inflation target and he pretty much said, you know, that's that's not even a topic of discussion. They're not going anywhere no matter what, even if it quote-unquote overburdens um, Americans. Um, some things to watch out for in the coming, I guess, weeks is March 10th. That's actually this Friday. Um, that uh, the jobs report is coming out so uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, and that's actually going to be used by the FOMC in their next decision to raise interest rates by a quarter basis points or half a half a percentage um, also the CPI report that's March 14th so next week so it's going to be really interesting um, specifically because there's a lot of debate um, about whether rates are going to be raised by uh, half a point or a quarter point at the next meeting, but to me it doesn't really matter. Um, going back to the balance sheet kind of uh, item that I mentioned, uh, it was surprising that the chairman of housing and insurance, uh, he pretty much asked Powell to stop buying mortgage-backed securities. And the reason that he said that is because the purchase of those securities by the Fed increases rents, increases the cost of mortgages, etc. So it's really interesting. The Fed currently can buy mortgage-backed securities if um, to the limit that $35 billion rolls off. So if $40 billion rolls off of their balance sheet in one month. They could technically use $5 billion to buy back into mortgage-backed securities. So, yeah, this chairman asked Powell to consider just not buying mortgage-backed securities at all due to the way that it's impacting um, impacting the, the housing industry. Um, another uh, really interesting... Um, um, topic was the interest rates. So someone asked uh, Powell how he feels the interest rates uh, will end up being um, at the end of the year. Uh, and he said that, uh, well, it's actually right here in this uh, pbs.org article. Um, pretty much it went from being a 5.1% target to a 5.6% target. So uh, the data that the Fed is seeing it's not really uh, it's not really what they want to see, so they're going to be uh, tightening more um, and possibly faster. So maybe not a quarter point uh, interest rate hikes, but maybe um, you know a half a point half a point hikes. So uh, definitely going to be interesting. Uh, the next FOMC meeting, I think it's March 21st and 22nd, so a couple of weeks, and we're going to be seeing. Uh, what's gonna happen uh, definitely excited and once again guys uh, definitely good to see that there's some some people interested in the balance sheet how things are going I think one of the <clears throat> one of the committee members uh, pretty much kind of compared the balance sheet to a hedge fund so um, where you know long-term assets are funded by short-term short-term money so if you look at the balance sheet right now most of the assets that are held are actually yielding they have lower yields than what's currently being issued so technically 
the Fed is losing money every time that they increase interest rates. So the, the value of these uh, securities that they're hold, all seven billion dollars of them or so, is going down. Uh, actually, one more thing I, I do want to bring up to you guys: uh, a lot of talk about capital requirements. So essentially, banks. Uh, are supposed to hold a minimum amount of capital and capital includes things like cash uh, government bonds and uh, various I guess uh, mortgage bonds things like that so it's relatively safe things and a lot of the committee members asked about you know how safe is the kind of system right now can banks uh, can banks uh, weather a recession or are they in trouble? So, um, quite a bit of talk about this. Uh, I'm sharing the Fed's uh, large bank capital requirements report, and this is August 22. So it should still be in effect. But as you can see, like some banks, like um, I guess like uh, Credit Suisse or Citigroup Inc., they have relatively higher capital requirements than other banks, like. American Express, for example, and that's because they did this like stress testing to see, you know, like let's say there's a recession, how are you guys gonna weather the storm? So, lots of questions about these uh, kind of uh, capital requirement things. Um, yeah, I'm actually sharing it now. So this is from the Federal Reserve website, large bank capital requirements, and kind of shows each bank's uh, capital uh, requirement level. So really interesting. Um, it's mostly these kind of things are mostly talked about when there's a potential for a recession. So yeah, I'll leave some links down below for you guys to check out. Uh, once again, uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.